what's going crazy right now is this uh, picture of Young Thug, his, 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 the picture that he's used for his album cover. And then you also have uh, like Young Jock uh, and, and what he's done with his hair. And so a lot of people have been talking and a lot of people have been discussing, um, you know, the, the concept of black male identity, what's beginning to shape it, uh, what's influencing it, um, you know, and then, and then, you know, speaking of that whole black male identity thing, uh, a guy whose work we've been privy to get a glimpse of, Dr. Chris M. Din, who is uh, one of the professors at the Teachers College in, um, in, uh, at... Columbia. Columbia, he wrote an article for the New York Times, I believe it was, mm -hmm. uh, called Why Black Men Quit Teaching. Um, and so, you know, when you think about that, he's writing this article uh, because, again, going back to the black male identity and what's shaping black male identity, one of the things that we've heard a lot about is the fact that have, if we had black more, black, more black men in schools, educators in schools, then that would really help to, um, to shape black men into being the men that they need to be, being uh, uh, really um, positive contributors to society, uh, giving uh, younger black males a direct person that they can have access to who's had some sort of success, um, you know, as, not just in entertainment, um, so that our own influences aren't coming from entertainment because sometimes the influence from entertainment can be challenging. You know, say a lot of stuff is might maybe being done for art, but it might not be practical for the everyday life of the average person. So I want to get your thoughts on would having I don't know how 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 much y'all have had black male teachers, but y'all are both black men. Would having black male teachers how would that affect you would say, um, or how did it affect, or if you didn't have that many, how would it have affect, you feel, the shaping of you as a black young man going, matriculating through, uh, through school? Maestro. Oh, go, go, go. oh maestro on the maestro. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a really interesting issue. I've actually never really thought about this until we brought this up today. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, for me, it's really a uh, well, complicated issue, but because yeah. you 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 also have your father, we all have our father, and that's exactly what I was going to okay. start with. Okay, and I think that's kind of one of the issues that mm. uh, Endin is kind of talking about, mm -hmm. just in general, and how black men in teaching are perceived. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he he says one of the reasons essentially why they quit is that they're coming, they're brought in as almost heroes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and to kind of serve, to like save the kids, mm -hmm. the black kids. You know what I'm saying. Not only to serve as an example, mm -hmm. but um, to be kind of like a role model mm -hmm. for the kids. Because, you know, the reality is, unfortunately, and we can talk about why this is the case, but, you know, a lot of black, a lot of kids in our black communities mm -hmm. grew up without fathers mm -hmm. in their homes, you know, for a multitude of reasons mm -hmm. that we can talk about. But, <clears throat> and so they come to school and they want to, I don't know if they want to, but people think that they should see black teachers, you know what I'm saying, to be able to experience, um, you know, good black men in those kind of roles. And even I kind of went through this. I taught for one year at a school in Harlem, mm -hmm. and when the principal brought me in, one of the reasons he said was, he was a black principal, black guy, great guy, and one of the reasons he said was he wanted another young black man to serve as almost a role model mm -hmm. for the kids, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It was mm -hmm. in Harlem, a black community, you know, Latino community, and so he wanted them to see another good mm -hmm young black man, successful black man. So for me growing up, like you said, I had my father. My father was my role model growing up. And so I didn't really have any black teachers at all that mm -hmm. I can remember mm -hmm. until I got to high school and I had a, a music teacher, mm -hmm. a black conductor. Mm -hmm. uh, he taught the choir. And he did have a big impact on me and really one of the reasons why I ended up in music, in addition to my dad, uh, but he was one of the you know big influences for my musical growth, mm -hmm. and so it has had an impact. But you know I don't know. It's a, it's a complicated issue. Like I said, there are a lot of, a lot of, there are a lot of factors. But for uh -huh. me, my role model was my father. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case for a lot of our you know you know people in our community, unfortunately. So 
is it the responsibility of you know more black men to become educators to mm -hmm. kind of provide that role model, mm -hmm. or you know, is there other ways that you know mm -hmm. that can be provided? You know, what I'm saying other avenues. So. Let's get Randall's take on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since Paul hogged up like yeah, that. I'm like there's not enough time to talk about this right nah, now. Man, I'm, I'm just you know it, it is a complex yeah. issue, and I feel like you, you named it pretty well. I, I mean, for me, I also had my father in the house, and I also had an older brother. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, they're the very definition of what it means to to be an, an educated, responsible, uh, you know, loving, compassionate black man. Right. I mean, no better examples in my life, in, in the world, I think, right? Uh, but I, I do think that there is something to say about having uh, good teachers, mm -hmm. right? period, mm -hmm. but then especially good black teachers mm -hmm. in position to guide you in a, a context that, you know, more, more often than not, dad and brother are not in, right? right? right. You know, I mean, they, I was fortunate to go to school with my brother, uh, but, you know, a lot of times there's too much of the age difference mm -hmm. for, for other people. Mm -hmm. your, your dad can be active in PAL and those type things, but ultimately he dominates the home, mm -hmm. right. right? So to have somebody help you navigate this environment mm -hmm. at each developmental stage of, of, of your life yeah. is is 100% mm -hmm. uh, beneficial, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I mean, I, I have one of the situations where, um, you know, the, the black teacher that I had was was very much he was influenced by the system that was dictating right. him as more of a uh, you know uh, somebody to render punishment mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. right like it was more about taming me and, and keeping me in my seat kind of like mm -hmm. Andrew talks about right tough, um, love, right, tough love and, and making sure that I didn't that I wasn't that dude mm -hmm. right then then actually being a nurturing figure I, overwhelmingly I've had those types. Uh, not that type, but the positive type. Let, let me ask you. Um, let me ask you, man. We're gonna run out of time. <laughs> I'm a, let's let's pause pause here, and then we are gonna come back, and I'm gonna ask you a question. All right? all right. Cool. So, Randall, question. Because you you've taught also, right? Mm -hmm. And luckily, all three of us have taught. I'll share my thoughts after after this, but. Can you give some give us some perspective since you have been in the position to also teach so similar and Paul shared some of his perspective? What was your perspective as being a black male presence inside the school? Uh, that's that's a good question, man. I, it, I think it also depends on the institution. So the first two colleges that that I worked at um, were small private institutions, mm -hmm. predominantly white. Um, so I was very much if not the only black male administrator on campus, one of very few, mm -hmm. right? Uh, particularly in my department or division. Um, so in my mind, I, I think I was I was harder on myself than, than the rest of the community in some ways because mm -hmm. I felt like I had to be that mm -hmm. that example for everybody. Like I couldn't I couldn't slip up mm -hmm. and, and and you know speak too urban, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. like I couldn't I mm -hmm. couldn't you know, dress too casual mm -hmm. on dress down days, right? I, I couldn't say that I was familiar with all the things that they were talking about. I couldn't condone maybe normal college behavior mm -hmm. for especially for the students of color mm -hmm. that, that, you know, I know I did mm -hmm. when I was in college. Yeah. Um, I felt like I had to be consistent all the time and, mm -hmm. and to a certain extent that actually caused, uh, uh, you know, uh, somewhat of a, a a rift between myself and, and my students. Like I limited the extent to which I could actually connect with them, you know. Um, but overall, I, I've, I've been able to develop nurturing relationships with them. Um, but you know, particularly at those institutions, I felt like I had to be that that guy, that perfect example um, of a standard higher that you know. So that in retrospect, actually diminished. The fullness of who I actually was, mm -hmm. and you know what helped to to get me to be that way. So that that's a short answer, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So um, so for me, as as far as my experiences, so I was a, a a track and field coach, you know, for high school in um, Long Island, New York. Then I I was also a substitute teacher for that same uh, district. Then also I was a program coordinator for. An elementary school in Southeast DC, right? Mm -hmm. 
So in all of those schools, you, you have a significant, I mean, pretty much the, the Southeast DC was an all black population at that school that I was teaching at. Um, and then, you know, there was a sh pretty much almost all black and Latino um, population when I was over at uh, high school in Long Island. So, you know, one of the things that I realized about my influence, I, I never really thought about me coming in there as a black man, you know what I'm saying, and what impact that might have until I really got to the Southeast DC position. And you did try to do what you can't, that wasn't even good English, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to do, I was trying to do what I could, you know what I'm saying, to be an influence, to have impact on the kids, but I'm not sure if, if the kids necessarily noticed anything, right. you know, uh, uh, different uh, or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it's one of those things that you wouldn't even notice at that age, even though it's still influencing you, right? So, right. so still, if myself and some of the other black male educators, because uh, they said that was one of the most that they've had black male educators at that school ever, and we, we had a strong bunch, mm -hmm. and we did our best mm -hmm. to pour into them. We did, we were rough on them. You know what I'm saying? Because those they were rough on us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was like, yo, it was almost impossible to deal. This was what was crazy, right? A lot of them would not under, could not understand. Like if you were just gentle with them, they couldn't understand it. It's not till you got a little bit live with them but that they responded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you were caught in this position, and yo, literally we would ask them all the time. We we're like, yo, why? Do y'all, why is it that y'all only listen to us when we get robbed? Or why is it when we're trying to be nice to you and gentle that, like, you don't respond? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. And so it's almost like you just have to meet them where they are and get, get rowdy sometimes for them to respect you. And then they'll kind of be like, oh, I, yo, he could get turned up. Right. All right, we'll listen, you know? Um, so that, that, was, uh, yeah. that, was, that was an interesting experience, and you can only hope that Something though that you did bring to the table and that they were saying, maybe they'll understand what you brought to the table if they go to an institution where they don't have you there and um, and nobody who tries to at least somewhat tell them about their history or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh man, I, now I value who Vaughn was when I had him as a teacher. Right. And then if I'm just, let me just speak on this real quick. The, the, um, this is where I would say it, I know that it can be very valuable to have black male teachers. I had two, two, te two of my, I went to Uniondale High School New, um, in New Long Island, New York, right? And we, I, in my opinion, we had a great school district. Uh, we had a lot of black female educators, but our male educators were for the most part white. However, these were white men who I do think genuinely cared about the black students that they had. Like, mm -hmm. literally, I felt like a lot of these men were my friend, you know what I'm saying? Like, like shout out to Principal Kate, um, you know, Mr. Casey, Mr. Frazenda, my, our coach, uh, Cornfield, who, who all he's done is uh, work with black kids, and he's been there for like 30 years, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so love those guys to death. The one thing that they probably couldn't do, though, is really teach us about black history the way black males could teach us about black history, right? And I didn't really have any college professors who were black males until I did my graduate program, and I did my graduate program at an HBCU, mm -hmm. right, Oakwood University. Mm -hmm. And wow, when I sat in there, the teaching was different, why? Mm -hmm. Because as we were teaching, as we were dialoguing, I could actually speak my language and they could understand that. They could use the same language with me. But not only that, but they were able to go into different nuances of our living and our like who we were as a people and things that we need to consider and what their experiences has have been that I'm just not gonna get from anybody else except somebody who has lived as a black man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, and and all almost all my professors were black men, you know, at that program. So um, so it was a very unique perspective to, to go into that situation where almost in every single class they talk about, even if the class doesn't specifically have to do with black, you know, blackness or, or, or black culture, they bring it up, you know what I'm saying? They talk about it. Very different than my other experiences. Although I love my other experiences and they were valid also. So. Yeah. And I'm saying this quick, so Paul, you, you can jump in and get out of here. But oh, the yeah, timekeeper. Yeah, so, so <laughs> what, what you were describing uh, in terms of the students that you had to get live with, right? Mm -hmm. I think what Anthony is saying and what I've been able to witness too, man, is the cause of that isn't necessarily based on the presence or absence of 
black male teachers, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. It's more emblematic mm -hmm. of the, the, the systems, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, the influence of our right. biases. Right, 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 right. And the influence of poverty, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, inequality mm -hmm. in our communities. Yeah. I mean, even like police brutality, mm -hmm. that, that is something that, you know, they're experiencing outside mm -hmm. of the walls of the schools and, and they don't have necessarily the platform or the space or and the white teacher wouldn't be able to really bring that, right, that right. as comfortably, right, right. police right. brutality. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But I, I think that that sort of behavior is mm -hmm. more attributed to the circumstances in which these, these kids are living mm -hmm. outside of those four walls. So mm -hmm. we expect them to come and function, you know, with, with it in, in, you know, the school, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, without that sort of guidance, without right. acknowledging that piece, I think it's just... It's, it's crazy. Right. And more importantly, I, I think the last thing I'll say is that, yeah, come on, right. Is that, um, like you said, it's important for teachers, black, whatever race, whatever mm -hmm. ethnicity, that they are able to relate to their students. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's yeah. kind of that's the main thing he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whether you're a black educator, white educator, whatever it is, you know, no, uh, no. Be able to understand your students and the culture of your students. The reality, you know, and the reality that they exist in, mm -hmm. and not to just you know box them in. That's one of the issues that we have in our education system. All the students are kind of boxed in together and treated the same way and expected to learn the exact same way. But that's not going to be the case. You know what I'm saying? And so um, whether it's you know more black male teachers, and I think we do need more black male teachers, but uh, they shouldn't be expected to come in and just be heroes, you know what I'm saying, be unrealistic expectations placed on them. Um, but all educators should be taught and should be, um, you know, just learn how to really interact. And there are a lot of great educators, I don't want to act like there are not, but um, just in general, I think that's really what the takeaway from his article um, just you know, understand your children, understand the context where they are, and understand how to relate to them and how to really help them to, to learn. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, at the end of the day, a part of learning is the context that you are surrounded by. Your worldview affects your ability to learn. So if you want to teach somebody well, understanding their worldview is key, so that you can begin to uh, uh, impact that worldview and speak the language that they speak because of it. So we'll leave it there. Uh, so y'all just heard that had a conversation about black men in education. Uh, we'll that y'all were blessed by it, man. We'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.